Hello, welcome back again. So, um, since the last time I fixed the remaining uh, things on the uh, on the audio circuit, so there were still a couple of cap capacitors that needed to be changed on the um, pickup input. So I did that, and um, I also tested the stereo. It's it's working fine. However, I noticed um, some strange things on the uh, balance control, mainly some differences between both channels. Um, I can show you that later. Um, but what I did now is I just uh, connected the radio again to uh, to the power. So again, same setup as uh, last time. Just some uh, just one speaker connected to the center. Well, the, actually the base speaker, and then for the rest some resistors in place of all the uh, other three speakers. And I put in all the tubes, um, including the magic eye. So I just wanted to check how the radio is performing. It, do we have maybe already a reception? Um, just before I start swapping out capacitors also in the uh, tuning circuits, it's always nice to know, just like with the audio circuit, um, how is it working so far. So. Let's hope. Um, let's see. Um, anyway, I still same thing. Haven't changed anything on the power supply. I still need to do that. Um, but so far, it's it's actually working quite well. So okay, um, let's put it on long wave and see what happens. Of course, I don't have the um, dial strings connected, so I'll have to uh, change the tuning condensers uh, manually. This is the AM tuning condenser here. So let's see what it does. Eh? A long wave. Let's power it up. Um, let's see. So we're getting 240 volts here. Um, and it should be dropping. Yeah, 239, 235. Okay. Let's see if now if we can hear something. Um, well, the volume control is crackling, so that's already fine. So let's see if we can. The magic eye is uh, do showing something, but very faintly. I think that magic eye uh, needs replacement. Um, let's see. Nothing. A little bit louder, maybe. Nope. Not that, nothing at all. Oh, 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 wait. There is something there, but it's very, very faint because the volume control is all the way up. Volume control is all the way up, and I'm hearing some French, very, very faintly. So I think that's RTL because I can uh, receive normally uh, Radio Luxembourg here in Belgium on long wave. Because, but my volume control is now all the way up, so it's and it's very, very faint. So. Uh, But we are receiving something, so that's good, uh, but it needs a lot of work. Okay, so let's try medium wave. Oh! Oh! Oh, fantastic! It's a bit bassy because I, I only have the bass speaker connected, of course, but... Uh, Oh, really? Great! Oh, <laughs> that's receiving quite well! Oh, great! So let's try shortwave. Hmm. Uh. 
That's not good. Nothing. Oh! Yeah. Something there, but also quite. Uh... Wait, let me swap my microphone around here. So yeah, I swapped the microphone on my camera. Maybe makes a bit of a difference in the, in the video now, but it's, it's receiving it not was re not receiving well, but. Yeah, it definitely needs work, but yay, the it's 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 retrieving so great. Second short wave. And the magic eye is really it's really faint. Uh, it, the magic eye nearly needs replacement, I think. Second short wave is not doing a lot. Short, second short wave band is not doing anything. Okay. okay, so let's try FM. Now the FM tuning condenser is here on the side, so let's try FM. Let's put it. Uh, Whoa, it's working! Whoa, whoa, very basic. Oh, this is not good. <laughs> the ideas we have, the quality we have in the team with the players we have, uh, such a big squad, uh, quality on the bench. <laughs> um, yeah, you're, you're, when you're number one, you always want to be there. Uh, that's why we play football. Is that maybe a reason to stay in the game? Ja, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Dat hij daar niet meer op antwoordt, hoeft hij niet te verbazen natuurlijk. Oh, 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 oh if I turn up the bass, then it's... Op een transfer, misschien komt hij er in de winter toch... So, if I turn up the bass, then it's really distorted. But, uh, the, the reception is surprisingly good on FM. And the magic guy is also... It's, it's working, but it's really faint, so... That really is replacement. Een evenaring is record van vier jaar geleden onder Albert Stuyvenberg toen nog... Boah! <laughs> the amount of volume coming out of this thing just by one speaker is already incredible. wondering um, I don't have the complete antenna connected uh, for FM I just have uh, the wire connected so normally it's attached to the dipole in the uh, cabinet but that's not the case but anyway this is oh, this is uh, <laughs> already more than I expected so I think this is uh, good to know what is working and what it what isn't so now I can start um, uh, changing all the uh, paper caps also on the uh, radio part so yeah great so see you after that and um, let's hope it improves the reception because especially the bass is a bit uh, it's too much here uh, it's really um, there's distortion on the bass so let's hope that it fixed that all as well Okay, so all the caps have been swapped and um, this was a hell of a job to do. You see all these here, they were mainly related to the um, radio part, so to the AM, FM part. Um, so they, this was quite a bit of work, but um, I managed to swap out all of them, all the paper caps um, are gone. Um, also there were a couple there in between which were a pain in the ass to get to um, and yeah these ones as well because they were overlapping uh, one another, each other so um, the only thing now I still 
need to do is to uh, swap out the filter can and that one is connected over there um, so I need to desolder these uh, wires and resistors over there and then we can uh, take out the, the filter can um, so that's the big one here on the side uh, that one um, those are, it's actually a 3 in 1 capacitor so there are 3 caps inside um, I think yeah, two, 2 times 100 microfarad and 1 times 8 uh, microfarad so um, we'll be swapping those out um, and then I also did something um, I, I attached the, the dial strings uh, back to the radio so as you can see the front panel uh, has been remounted on the chassis I haven't um, added the, the glass panel yet just uh, the metal panel and I also reattached both the AM and the FM dial strings now this was um, <laughs> really a hell of a job um, took me I think maybe in total three hours or so to just attach these two uh, dial strings it was really really painful job to do um, the problem is that they go around the panel and um, I chose to first install back, uh, put back the panel and then afterwards install the dial strings and um, for the FM dial string, so the lower one here, I think you could use a different approach you could first attach the FM dial string and then afterwards install this metal panel so then um, um, that might make your life a bit easier the problem however is that the AM one here see it's going here through this hole so the panel needs to be in place before you start mounting the the dial string um, maybe you can have it slightly deattached or I, I don't know I also have no clue how they managed to do this in the factory uh, it must also have been a pain in the ass to install this because if you see for example let's take the AM1 uh, it goes here uh, to the left and then it goes under there and it goes all the way uh, underneath over there and then it goes here uh, through one wheel and then it comes back it goes over the the uh, pulley here on the flywheel and then it's attached here to the um, tuning condenser but really this this tuning condenser it's really a pain in the ass to reach if you have this panel installed and you need to um, wrap it around multiple times and it falls off constantly it's really difficult I mean the FM one was already difficult and that one uh, is very accessible let's say compared to the AM one but still it was already uh, difficult to do um, um, so just to give you a couple of tips if you're doing the same thing um, here in the manual uh, you have the drawing on both how the uh, dial strings need to be attached um, so let's see this, let's take for example the AM one here you see that an, an dial string of these types of radios consists out of two parts so you have um, an cotton so the textile style which is written here in German means uh, um, a cotton string and then style style means uh, steel wire so one half of the dial string is made out of yeah, cotton I think um, and the other one is made out of steel and they are attached to each other with a spring here in between so the, the drawing here with the full line is the cotton wire and the dotted line is the steel wire so then you see here that the um, cotton wire it goes over here via these two um, wheels which are uh, the ones over there um, then it goes all the way to the other side of the radio over another wheel and then here this one is the pulley 
uh, next to the flywheel so then it's wrapped two times around the flywheel like uh, written here and then it goes you need to follow the, the the solid line here it goes to the bottom side of the tuning condenser through the hole and it's attached to that top hook there the steel wire however it's going of course in the other direction and then here you see the indicator is connected to the steel wire just like you uh, now see uh, where is it? over there let me just uh, wait. let me just voila, do it like this so here you see that this part is uh, the cotton wire and you have here is the spring and here is the steel wire that starts and then the indicator is connected here on the steel wire so that's that part over there so here you see that you need to put the indicator all the way to the right and then it's going the steel wire is going over this and this wheel and then you need to check carefully because here it's wrapped two times around the um, two times around the tuning condenser as you see this dotted line uh, like this and then it's attached to the bottom hook now comes the problem because not only do you need to manage to attach this steel wire two times around the, this wheel without it flying off but even if you manage to do that there are two positions that this wheel can be in so as you see here the opening of the wheel here needs to be on the left side so that I can put it on the left side here um, let's see um, see there is the opening and like that that's how the wheel should be when the indicator is all the way to the right here however um, this wheel can make two rotations so this means that you need to put it in the correct uh, position so let's see here um, I can show you so this is so now the the hole is on top but as you see it can make multiple rotations see now so you need to figure out which of the two positions is the correct one and that's more easily said than done um, but I found out that um, by attaching it the wrong way around first and then having to remove it again and then having to attach it again I found out that you need if you you need to put it in the most extreme position so this means that if, the, if it is like this the wheel will stop because the tun tuning condenser is completely closed as you see here so with the condenser completely closed this opening will be on the left side and that is the position which is shown here in the drawing and that's not written anywhere in the manual so because there are two positions uh, which um, can confirm to the opening here on the left side but the drawing over here you need to make sure that the tuning condenser is completely closed because if you put it like this see that's uh, it's really difficult to do with one hand but uh, okay give me a moment see here that is the opening again so now in this position the opening is also on the left side but the tuning condenser is not closed so this is not correct so first I attached it like this then of course the 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 indicator was completely in the wrong position and I had to start all over again so if you're attaching this um, dial cord make sure that when you are implementing let's say the drawing here that the tuning condenser is completely closed so it's in like this um, same goes for the FM1 so there as well but there you cannot see the tuning condenser but there as well uh, you see here that in this case the opening has to be on the bottom side so you need to make sure that it's also the tuning condenser is also on its uh, farthest position possible 
uh, when you are uh, attaching here this, uh, this dial card. So pay attention to that because I did it wrong two times and I uh, had to start all over again uh, each time. So, But finally I managed to do it, uh, so yeah. Um, okay, so let's get started working on replacing this big one here now. I think that's the only cap that still needs to be changed on the radio. Okay, so I got the filter can out of the chassis, which was quite a challenge actually. Um, it was um, quite stuck in there, well stuck, it was very well uh, fixed in there. You see um, these three tabs here on the side, they were um, they stick through uh, three holes in the chassis, well three slits actually, and then the, the tap was twisted around and soldered so it was um, quite a challenge to get the solder removed and the taps uh, bent again in a straight position to be able to slide the, uh, the can, the complete can out. Um, of course I also could have just cut them off but it's always nice when you can keep something uh, as original as possible. Uh, so what is this in fact? This is, the, uh, this is a filter can so on the schematic it's this one here, this big one and basically it's just three uh, capacitors, three electrolytic capacitors in one uh, package so um, as you see here um, there are here uh, six tabs um, the three outer ones they are all connected together and they are a common ground for all three capacitors so with these types of caps um, all the capacitors, all the negative connections of all the uh, capacitors inside, they are connected to each other and they are connected to the outer casing. So that's the negative. Um, and then you have the three positive taps for the three different uh, caps in this can. Um, so basically, if you would want to connect one capacitor, you take the correct positive one and then the negative connection is provided via the casing and that one is connected to the ground connection or to the chassis itself. Um, so that's how these things are wired up. They are quite common in these old radios. What is a bit less common is the fact that this one has three um, caps inside. Um, what you see often is two. Uh, three is a bit uh, less common but still. Um, so as you see here this one has a uh, two times a 100 microfarads and one uh, 8 microfarad electrolytic capacitor inside. So now how do we know um, which of the three connections is the one for the 8 microfarads? Because then the other two will be 100 microfarads of course. Well you could just measure with a multimeter or you could just try to figure out it uh, based on how it was connected in the radio and then you could check the schematic and, and, and deduct which of the three um, is the 8 microfarad uh, cap. But I actually found something which is even more easy to figure it out. So what you see here, here are the specs of this um, capacitor and here in the last line you see a square drawing and then 8 microfarads. So keep this in mind because if you look here at the bottom um, let me just focus a bit so if you look here at the bottom then you see that uh, for each of the three um, connections there is a symbol next to the tab. So here you see a triangle uh, on that one you see uh, some moon shape type, I think it's more like uh, half a circle. And over there you see uh, a square symbol. So this one is the 8 microfarad uh, positive lead and the other two are 100 microfarad each. So let's, let's see if I'm correct. Uh, let's put in here the uh, multimeter. So we connect the negative one to e one of the uh, outer connections. Let's put this one on capacitance. Um, and then let's, so this one 
should be the 8 microfarads. Let's see. So let, this can take a while to read. And that one is saying 8.3, 8.4 microfarad. So this is indeed, so this is the 8 microfarad and it's even still quite correct. Eh? So 8. Dot, uh, let me do that again, but this time in focus or in, in screen. So um, 8.54, 8 8.4, something like this. That's still quite acceptable. So this cap is still quite okay, I think. The capacitance reading at least. I'm not, I don't have a device to measure the ESR ratio, but um, then let's check the other ones. They should be 100 microfarad each. Um, so let's check this one and let's wait a while because um, this can also take a while. Uh, 77? Yes, 77. So that is a bit low. Eh? That's 30% low. 79? Okay, 20%, let's say 20-25% low. Um, so that one is out of spec. Yeah? That's, that could be better. And this one... Seventy, sixty-eight, sixty-nine, yeah, seventy. So this one is even worse. So that one is thirty percent out of spec. So they are, need to be replaced. Um, and what are how I'm going to do this is I'm going to replace them uh, with these um, these three uh, modern caps that I bought or that I, yeah, and um, so. I have two times 100 microfarad, of course, and 147. Oh, no, so, sorry, um, eight microfarad, uh, 450 volts. So I'm going to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this can and try to get all the guts inside out of it and all the original capacitors and get it out of it clean everything inside and then I'm gonna try and mount these uh, three caps in the original can and put it back so that it looks original so that you don't see these um, modern caps in a, in a old radio um, I think it's gonna be quite a challenge because if you look I mean they if you put would put both of them next to each other they are wider than than the original can so I cannot put them uh, next to each other, I would have to put them on top of each other like this, but then how do I fit the third one in? Um, it's gonna be a challenge, because if I look at this, so that might work in width, so I hope that I can do something like this, I can put these two in and then I can put that one uh, next to it, uh, let's see, um, in width it's also not gonna work because remember that the outer casing is conductive so if I would put it in like this it might fit but then one of the terminals might hit, hit the outer casing so yeah it's gonna be a puzzle I think so that's what I'm gonna do now so I carefully opened up the, the capacitor well not it's not completely open yet I just with a screwdriver I very carefully uh, lifted the the border here or the edge which was clamped around so I just took a, a screwdriver and very carefully I lifted this up um, that it's a bit damaged now is it's not that uh, not that big a deal because when um, you put it in the casing like this or in the in the so in the chassis like this yeah you won't see anything on the bottom side here um, so when you I mean I restuffed the um, the can with new cap caps. I'm planning to um, bend it back, bend this uh, this edge back, so then you won't see anything from the side. Um, but now you can also clearly see that the outer casing here is actually used as a conductor for the negative leads because uh, when you open it up, you see you have here this ring to which the the negative leads are connected in the radio, which are connected to the chassis. But this ring is not connected to anything, it's just loose and you have an, uh, an isolation rubber underneath. So 
how this is done is inside the caps inside the negative side of the of the caps inside is connected to the casing and then um, this ring so then the edges of the casing are pressed around the ring so that uh, the ring is making contact with the casing and like that you have the negative lead on the on the tabs here so the next thing to do here is to uh, pry out this this rubber um, with probably with the screwdriver or something yeah see it's oh yeah it's very loose so it's just taking out the rubber that's the now the easy part eh? and then now not sure yet how I will do this and this seems to be quite quite strongly fixed inside so I will have to pry a bit more on the edges and then try to pull it out maybe with like this maybe mm. it's not really budging so I'm gonna try to figure out how I'll do this and uh, you'll see in a minute okay so that was easier than I thought I just gave it a good yank and it immediately well almost immediately came loose so let's just check what's inside um, Oh, so there is all the guts of the cap. See? So here you can nicely see the different compartments in the in the cap and how these are connected to the to the three leads. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to cut this off, this plate off here on the on the inner side. Then I'm going to clean out all the gunk here inside. Um, if you do this, be a bit careful because this is a slightly comparable to a battery, I think, inside. So it uh, it wouldn't surprise me if this is toxic. So just try not to pry it out with your fingers and um, get rid of it as soon as possible I'd say don't leave this lying around um, and then I'm going to clean the complete inners of the of the cap and I'm going to drill um, some holes here three of them and then I'll stuff these caps inside and I'll put some new leads through this um, um, lid and then I will connect those to the to the original tabs here so that we have um, and then I'm done putting everything back of course so that it, it looks like an old can from the outside but from the inside it will be a new one and I also think I'm gonna leave it at that for this video the video is already uh, running long enough I think um, so next video I'll start with the nice and uh, restoration of this filter can and I'll put it back in the radio and then next video we're going to check um, how the voltages are now with the new filter cap in place and then we're also going to decide if we need to replace the uh, rectifier as well could be that it's still okay um, but we'll only know that for sure after this um, cap has been replaced so and then we can also do a test again um, which should be quite nice so i hope to see you there um, stay safe and um, yeah i think this will be the last video of the year so happy new year already i would say and uh, see you in 2021 so bye bye